Netflix is tired of you using other people's passwords and watching content they paid a whole lot of money for for free. According to reports, they are potentially going to crack down on password sharing, and people are freaking out. Our panel's still with us. John, what's your take? I mean, Netflix pays billions of dollars for premium content that we all want to see, and then lots of us don't even pay for it. This is, this is Prince all over again. This oh, is Quavo wow. yeah. all over again. This is all my artist friends who said, I made the music. Mm -hmm. how, can you, how, how can you take it and not compensate me for it? It's my art form. This is an extension of that same conversation. We have a whole generation, and I call it, you might call it an entitlement generation, who thinks that stuff should be free. Well, it's not. If I created the art, it's yours if I give it to you. Otherwise, you should pay me for it on an agreed basis. It's all published. This is an extension of that. This is their artistry. This is their artwork. This is their creativity. We're enjoying it, and if we want it, we should pay for it. Judy, you're a performer. Oh, I can't tell you. We would, when the pandemic hit, we would do these Zoom shows, mm -hmm. and, you know, one person would buy a ticket, and, you know, six people are sitting on the couch. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was, it was infuriating. It was just infuriating, and it's true. Don't take what I have worked my whole life for and, and take it away from me and make money off of it. It's really, it's completely unfair. I'm then sorry. Then you have to answer for all millennials. Sammy, do you have your own password? Of course. I, I'm the one that gives my passwords out. I'm a little <laughs> well, your mother just told me. <laughs> I give her mine. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I completely see it from the, the argument of the artists getting paid for their work. I don't really think that's the argument that Netflix is necessarily putting forth. Because I'll be honest, I understand. I don't think that millennials are opposed to artists or producers or anyone getting paid for the content that they create. I think that this was seen as an unfriendly consumer decision for a few reasons. One is that it doesn't really consider people who don't necessarily live in, you know, in their in their home. Maybe there someone is deployed or if they're, you know, they're away at college. So I think there's like questions around that and that not really considering, um, you know, everyone's situation. But I also think that at this time when there are so many options for content, I think it was not a great time for them to make this to make this call because of how their content netflix's content i would say compared to some of the other streamers has been faring um i think that all these uh all these shows all these uh streaming services basically picked up their consumers and their viewers from making really good shows like in the beginning of netflix it was house of cards and it was orange is the new black and you saw um you saw apple and hulu doing the same with like handmaid's tale but i think that they should be, I think that if they had done it at a time when their content was more at its peak, it would have been a better received, received decision. All right. Well, Netflix is not the only one out there with new rules. New York Magazine has a whole issue dedicated <laughs> oh, to new rules, fun. especially <laughs> in a post-pandemic world. It lays out how we should be living. Jelani, I turn to you first, <laughs> especially with so many people working from home. You would never call someone at home, a work colleague, after 9 p.m., mm -hmm. but can you text them? And if you do, do you expect them to respond immediately? No and no. <laughs> and so I'm the dean of Columbia Journalism School. As dean, do you know what my best friend has become? The scheduled email. Ooh. So you do all of the stuff that you do. If you have a kind of brainstorm or something that you need to communicate to people, you get it all out, and then they get it on Monday morning. Uh, you really have to protect the integrity of people's time. And I think even in other places where they're legislating around this, um, it just is simple. Like, we don't want work creep to take over people's lives. More and more businesses are now calling their employees back to the office. Do you think that's a good or a bad thing, John? I think it's a brilliant thing. You, look, technology is more efficient, it's not more effective. During the pandemic, we zoom, 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 zoom. We don't remember any of it. <laughs> uh, it was a very effective, it was a complete, a complete fog. It was very, you know, if we know each other, we can do a deal. But most people are selling something, themselves, a product, whatever. You need to, I need to feel you. And, and that, that feeling has to be done in person. That's why I flew here. That's why we're here in person. Not, that's, the whole person of a dating act, act is to get in person. <laughs> and it's technology. So at some point, the most important thing in life is culture. Culture in your family, culture in this, in this, in this room here, culture in this city. New York has a different culture than where I'm going to after this, Atlanta. It's about culture. You build that in person. So I think it's really important, not just for efficiency and effectiveness. I think it's important for the employee's career. Well, workplace mentorship. You know, oh, there, you, there we you really go. have a hard time yeah. you know, helping someone learn the ropes and, watching, and those kind of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And learning how to make eye contact. I talk to so many people 
and they make no eye contact with me. And I also have noticed your generation tends Sammy to... Sammy is getting I'm crushing <laughs> back. All right. I, I can take it. But I can I, take I, it. I, do you go to restaurants and you see... Time. Okay, <laughs> and you, there's a bunch of millennials, and they're talking so loud! Because, and I'm like, oh my God! It's... Well, you can talk softly and everyone will hear you. Doing yeah. this. Or yeah. everybody oh, oh, doing everyone. This. I feel like I'm called to be the millennial defense attorney here. Like, you know, I, I think that one thing that I have kept in mind, and, and I'm the elderly Gen Xer here, I'm is older, that... way older than you. But, but I'm just saying, like, you know, know our, our generation, yeah. you know, had some pretty weird behaviors ourselves, and so, I don't know. I think, I think that the, the millennials are just fine. I can speak up about the uh, working in person or working remotely because I actually do run a company and we are a millennial media company that mostly employs millennials and Gen Z. Um, and honestly, we implemented a policy that we call optional as needed. So the rule mm. is essentially if you need to be in the office for something, then you need to be there. And if you don't, you have an option. And really what the result has been is that People show up every day because they want to be there. And they but people be don't want to feel like they have to be there. But maybe that's because you run a great company that people right. want to be a part right. of. But that's and people who are <laughs> shift workers who are just yeah. coming for a paycheck are saying, I'm going to plug it in, I'm going to do right. my tasks, I'm going to go fold the laundry. Well, some of it, honestly, some work, I think, really suffers when it's not done in person. And I think some work can thrive when it's not done in person. And it's really a question of who is doing what and then... You Human interaction is, is very key. important. Yeah. Your career sure. suffers when you don't show up in person. I don't see you. But out also, of sight, out of mind. I don't want to work at home. I, I, I want a space <laughs> from... I want the place where I, I live, yeah. and the place where I relax and read books and all those things to be different than the place where I do my work. And, and so, I want to pack into yeah. a club and not watch Judy on a Zoom and be shoulder Thank to you. shoulder and watch you perform. Thank you. I no really more saying... Yeah. You, you can't really say COVID as your excuse to not go to a co-worker's party. At some point, you have to go back out of the house safely. <laughs> there are a lot of rules. Many have changed, but some have stayed the same. Please remember to say please and thank you and compliment a stranger today. And definitely do not microwave fish when you do go back to the office. It's totally <laughs> gross. <laughs>